Hi guys, I'm Ahana and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be addressing whether you should take money from angels or VCs. If that sounds good to you, then keep on watching. So to get started, I'm going to explain what an angel investor is and what a VC or venture capital investor is. From there, I'll go through the five key differences in the way they work and the things that they're looking for, so that by the end of this video, you're able to have a clearer picture of what might be a better option for you and your startup. So what's an angel investor? An angel investor is an individual who is putting their own money into a company. Angels tend to be people who are wealthy, so they may have a high paying job or they may themselves be a founder who has exited their own company and just has a pot of money lying around. They may be a wealthy friend or family. Angels make their own decisions about their investments and it's up to them to do the research on where they want to invest in. When an angel invests, it's really just their decision. They don't really need external input to it. The way an angel investment works is they give you cash in return for equity or a percentage of your company. Now, a VC firm is fundamentally different to an angel. An angel is an individual, whereas a VC firm is an entire organization organization of individuals who are investing somebody else's money. The people working at the VC fund are professional investors, so they are trained in spotting companies that could give them a good return. And where do they get their money from? Well, they have what's called limited partners or LPs. Now, these LPs can be corporations, high net worth individuals, private and public pension funds, foundations. There's a lot of big pots of money in the world, and oftentimes part of that is allocated into venture capital. So the venture capital fund has to seek out these LPs so that they can raise a pot of money. And then it's their job to find companies who are going to grow that they can put that money into so that they too can grow that pot of money that they've been given. So that's a quick overview of what an angel is and what a VC is. Now I'm going to go through five key areas that you may want to consider when it comes to taking investment from angels or VCs. So let's jump in. Number one, priorities. Based off of the description of angels versus VCs, VCs need to make money to exist. If VCs keep losing money, they're not going to get more LPs investing their money in them and they won't sustain themselves as businesses and they won't be able to continue investing in companies. So. It is crucial that a VC makes good investments and makes money. Whereas with an angel, of course they would like to make returns, but ultimately everything is their decision and provided they still have money, they are able to make as many angel investments as they like. Given that VCs are companies themselves, there's also often other dynamics at play. Especially for an early stage startup, it can be really difficult to know if it's gonna be worth a billion dollars or it's gonna go bust in the next year. But one of the biggest drivers that VCs respond to is FOMO or fear of missing out. So if a startup already has other VC funds chasing after it, chances are that in itself will cause the startup to be really, really popular with even more VCs. Now with an angel, given it's more of a one-to-one -one conversation and a one-to-one -one relationship, the drivers tend to be quite different. A lot of the time, angels just want to support a founder that they really like or an area that they really like. While of course angel investors do have strategies in place, it's not quite as strategic as an entire VC fund. And more often than not, just getting along with the angel investor can often be the largest predictor of success when pitching an angel. Whereas with a VC, even if you get along with the individual investor very well, that certainly doesn't mean that their fund is going to invest in you because there are so many other factors at play and they have to be as sure as they can that they're gonna get a financial return. The second point, the amount invested. Angel checks tend to be much, much smaller than VC checks. The size of the angel check is totally dependent on the investor. And as I mentioned before, there are different types of angel investors. There might be a very, very wealthy person, or there might just be a regular person working a regular job and they just wish to put their savings into entrepreneurs and startups. Their check sizes will often be a lot smaller, normally in the single digit thousands. And then you have very wealthy angel investors who may invest hundreds of thousands of their own personal money. Now, VCs often will have a much bigger pool of money to play with and as such they write bigger checks. The other dynamic at play with VCs is that oftentimes as part of their strategy they will have ownership targets. So let's say they have ownership targets in all of their seed investments of 10%. Depending on whatever the company's valuation is that they're investing in they have to give a certain amount of money in order to get that 10% equity in that company. Given that VC check sizes are larger, this is also why you see VCs investing in later stage companies, whereas you don't really see angels investing in later stage companies. Point number three, the relationship with the investor. With angels, as I've said, everything is on a case by case basis. It is ultimately a relationship between two people. Angel investors can be as hands off or hands on as you're looking for. 
And in fact, that might be part of your strategy as a founder when identifying potential angel investors. For us, for example, we wanted people that were quite hands-on and with different areas of expertise. So we strategically reached out to some people with great marketing knowledge or great dermatology knowledge or a great network of other investors. With VCs at the early stages, the relationship will be pretty similar to an angel as it's unlikely that a VC will ask for board seats in an early funding round. However, the older your company gets and the more money you raise, VCs do eventually start taking board seats, meaning that they legally have a say of how your company is run. The other thing to note is that some of the big name VCs have major operations support. So they may have an HR department or a compliance department that you as their portfolio startup can actually access. So if you don't have your own in-house HR, sometimes the VC firms will actually have that for you and you can leverage their resources. All right, the fourth point, the process. Angels are super straightforward. It can just be a matter of a single conversation as they're the only person involved in that decision. With VCs, however, it is certainly not a process of just one person making a decision. Normally, the way things will work with a VC is that first, a junior person on the team will reach out to you, try and learn a bit about you as a founder, learn a bit about your company. Then they'll go back to their team. They will talk to the partners or the more senior people in the VC fund about the company that they've talked to and whether they think it's worth moving forward or not. And if they can get the partner on board, oftentimes they'll schedule a second meeting with the partner. Let's say things continue to go well at this stage and the partner is on board and really wants to invest in your company. Well, in most firms, they still have to convince all of the other partners to get on board. Part of the process of getting people on board is also doing a lot more due diligence. So they'll want to dive into your user metrics. They might want to talk to your customers. And the fifth and final point, which leads directly on from process is timescales. So let's start with angels again. It's very simple. It's just one person's decision and it's however long that person needs. I've had angels commit in the pitch meeting itself. I've also had angels ask for three follow-up meetings in which they wanted more information. And with VCs, as I mentioned, the process is a lot more arduous and they may even start building the relationship years before making an investment. There's also a marked difference between European and American VCs. American VCs tend to be a lot more bullish and move a lot more quickly when making their decisions. Whereas European VCs, even at the early stage, really do a lot of due diligence. They delve into the numbers, all of the things that I mentioned which slows down their process. So generally, people who are looking to raise quick rounds tend to talk to mainly American VCs because they know they make decisions more quickly and this is often considered more founder friendly. And to put some numbers to it, for reference, with our own pre-seed round, one of our US investors made a six-figure check decision in just a matter of three hours. Now to compare that with some European VCs, we ended up having five hour long meetings over the span of three months. So it can really vary quite dramatically. Do keep in mind that it's also not an either or. You don't only have to raise angel funding or only VC funding. You most certainly can do both. And that's exactly what we did here at Clear. When I started fundraising, I just assumed an investor is an investor and it would all be sort of Dragon's Den style pitching. But I think especially with the VCs, understanding the background and how decisions are actually made can certainly help with managing your expectations when you go into a conversation. And that's all for this video. I hope this was helpful. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more content just like this, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.